Good morning everyone, it's at silly o'clock again, it's just before 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm out doing another test drive uh, in the Kona Electric. This, this time it's my Kona Electric. Um, purpose of the test today is I wanted a rapid charge test or two and I want to replicate what I did in the 39 kilowatt hour. And the reason for that, I want to collect the stats, I want to collect the data and plot that on a graph side by side so we can visually see the different charge rates between the two and the experience. And the difference has started straight away. I've set off with 19% state of charge and 43 miles on the GOM, where previously I set off in the 39 kilowatt hour with again 19% state of charge, but I only had something like 30 or 33 miles on the GOM. So the first thing to notice is, is the obvious. It's it's a bigger battery, so percentage-wise, I've got more range, I've got more contingency. I'm sure most people that have EVs have a percentage number that they don't really like to go below, or a miles on the GOM they don't like to go below, and it's that comfort zone. Well, with the 64, you get a bigger comfort zone, a bigger buffer, and that's the very first thing to notice. Um, temperature outside is six degrees. It's a very clear, starry night outside, and a uh, little bit nippy, uh, no ice though. But I've got the heated steering wheel on, the heat is on, the heated seat is on. I am I'm feeling quite nice and warm actually. Um, it's a good start. So that's the purpose of the test. Um, I want that chart data. I want to know how fast this Kona charges compared to the 39. So I'm not in a particular hurry to get to the first charger. Uh, I'm not going to be speeding because I'm trying to keep the battery quite cold. One of the things I noticed with the 39 kilowatt hour was it charged slower than I thought from cold. Now, I know a lot of people have been leaving comments saying, yes, batteries are um, more susceptible to cold and they won't charge as well when cold. But I didn't expect it to be that bad, um, especially when I've just driven 15 miles to get there. It's still what I thought um, tapered off right at the beginning. I want to do the test in this car, driving exactly the same, driving nice and slow to get there, almost as if I'm running out of fuel, but I'm obviously not in this one, and uh, see the difference. So one, I want the accuracy, but two, if there is an issue charging from cold, I'd like to know that. While we're on the way, I've turned the camera around and uh, taking a shot of the uh, heads-up display. So at the moment, you should be able to see the speed limit for the road that I'm on. You can see that I'm in eco mode and have a speed limit set of 75. We're doing 52 miles an hour uh, and we've got 9.4 miles to go and then we meet our junction. So we've got the sat nav instructions there. So let's, um, let's stick cruise control on. cruise control on it's set to 54 miles an hour at the moment you can see the green steering wheel that it's going to steer for me lane keep assist and lane follow assist are on and uh, we've got the distance between any cars in front if I adjust that you can see the little bars on the two um, lane markers those adjust so we've got that at maximum and you've also got the blind spot uh, warnings there and it's detected a car, but you can see now a car in the display. That's nine miles travelled so far uh, en route to the first charger, and we're only doing three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So that's, um, that's not very good, but I've had the heater on, the heat seats, the heat steering wheel, and it is damp on the road, so, and very, very cold. This I find, in all the journeys I've done, is the worst time to be travelling. For me, I much prefer travelling first thing in the morning, but uh, the car definitely doesn't seem to like it. The efficiency is nowhere near as good travelling first thing in the morning when it's damp and the air is heavy. One of the other things to mention is um, a few people were saying before, you know, had I turned winter mode on, and was I using winter mode, and was that why the battery was cold? Well, winter mode is on today. Um, I've set it on just to conclude that it has no effect because it doesn't it doesn't have any effect on warming the battery up in these sort of temperatures at six degrees C. So I'm looking at the battery care screen now and it's showing zero kilowatts and the winter mode has been on from when I set off. So winter mode I will go into a more detailed uh, video at another time but it basically only works at temperatures of minus 10 and below. It's there to protect the battery in extreme conditions not UK winter time. Okay, we're just arriving at the uh, site of the first charger. We've done 15 miles now and we've got 
13% battery left. That's um, a lot, lot better than we had in the 39 and a lot more comfortable from my perspective. And that's a nice friendly sight to see. Okay, the car's plugged in now on the charger. We're charging straight away. And the first thing I notice is basically there's no delay. Um, the charger came in and it ramped up very, very quickly straight to 36, 37 kilowatts, which is the band above where the 39 was. Uh, this one now, uh, we've just risen up to 17% and it's now charging at 41 kilowatts. I'm gonna be here a lot less time to get the car charged. And what will be interesting is to see at what point I get to the 130 mile range, how long that takes. It took me over an hour to get to 80%, which was 130 mile range. Okay, so one thing I've noticed with the car so far is the difference between the 39 and the 64 in the fans and heater side of the battery management that goes on. In the 39, every rapid charge that I went to, it came on and it's really obvious, quite intrusive noise in the cabin and definitely loud outside. It sounded more like a fan. Here today, um, right from the start, I've been hearing a mild hum on the inside of the car and uh, it stays on, this hum, whether the ignition's on or off. And it just sounds more like a pump circulating liquid, but the sort of thing that'd be on your central heating system that you can't really hear. You, there's no gurgles, there's no noise, there's just this very faint noise. From outside the car, um, there's no noise at all. There's no noise from under the bonnet. So it's not the same thing uh, as I experienced in the 39 kilowatt hour. Now, that to me really interests me because I've asked the questions of Hyundai, I asked the press team um, to tell me the differences between them in how the battery management works and they basically told me they can't tell me. Um, it's a secret, um, yes it is documented, yes they know, but they're not telling anyone. Um, so we're not to know what these components are and what they're actually doing and what conditions they will come on or come off. We can only find out um, by doing this, by testing it and finding out. It sounds like it's behind the dash. But again, I can't tell from inside the car exactly what it is or where it is. And from outside, I can't hear, I can't hear it at all. Oh. Yeah. It's gone off. So at the same time it's gone off, we're now up to 45 kilowatts. So, yeah. That looks like it was throttling it slightly um, until the battery got to the right temperature. So that didn't take long, did it? Uh, we've been here 15 minutes. Something like that, that it was on, maybe a little bit more. My gut feel from all of this is that there is something different between that car I tested from Hyundai, the 39 kilowatt hour, and this, my own uh, 64 kilowatt hour. There's something very different about how it manages the battery temperature, that the devices it's using were different. The noises it was making was different. The amount of tapering that occurred at the start was different so how it's protecting the battery on the 39 seemed to be very different are they the same battery packs are they made by the same manufacturer um a few questions to ask so we've now passed the point where the range on the car is already above where we were in the 39 kilowatt hour when it was at 80 percent and we set off and that's taken probably around 30 minutes, uh, perhaps a little over 31, 32. It's almost twice the speed in gaining range on how fast it's charging. Um, the 64 kilowatt hour is getting much sooner to the higher rates of charge at the 40 plus range, and it's still charging at 47 kilowatts at the moment at 55%. So it gets there much quicker and it stays there a lot longer. And uh, the chart's gonna make really interesting reading when I get that. And the chart, which I can show you now, of course, because uh, I've gone home, updated the spreadsheet and edited the video to put it in. You, you can definitely tell from where the peaks are on the graph at the highest rates of charge that on the first charge I did, there was some 40 plus kilowatt uh, charging rates on the first charge, which I didn't actually see in the car, but the video captured it, so I've recorded it on the graph. Um, but in the 64 kilowatt hour, there's much more and it got there much earlier in the range. So that for me um, is the story of the tests, that the differences in the car and how it handles and the performance and those differences between the car, even the spec levels between the premium and the premium SE that I experienced testing those two cars, those aren't the big concerns. The big concerns are the battery 
and um, how it charges and it's much much slower there was lots of people telling me that uh, the reasons why it's slower is because it's a lower capacity battery but you know I don't I don't agree with all of those things you know there might be some technical explanations for some of it but if you just look at the obvious facts the ionic charges at faster rates than the 39 kilowatt hour Kona did on my tests and the Nissan Leaf charges at faster rates and the 39 kilowatt hour is capable of charging at faster rates so if you add all of those things together then it could charge at the same rates as the 64 but it's not for some reason it's not being allowed to now some people say oh but it could be the charger well in theory it could be the charger but I'm coming to the same charger same time of day same temperatures exactly the same test and the results are very very different in what you hear what you see and how fast the car actually gains miles on the GOM so for me I think I summarized it in my last video as well but I wouldn't buy the 39 kilowatt hour basically just because it's slower charging if it charged at the same fast speed as the Ionic or the 64 kilowatt hour, it would be the car to buy. Um, um, I think it would be the gem of the car that I really thought it was, but it seems flawed. And I think people, if they moved to the 39 kilowatt hour Kona, would be quite frustrated being sat at a charger longer because it's not receiving the right charge rates. Whether it'd be any better in the summer, um, I don't know. But anyway, there, there you go, there's, there's my summary. We're still at 47 kilowatts and uh, it's 62% now. So it's stayed at that high level of um, charge rate for quite a good period of time. Um, very impressive. Only 19 minutes to go until 80%, so we'll be off soon. So 80% charge, 226 miles in eco mode, 217 in comfort. And sport 214 is what it says and if I turn the heater on it's gonna drop that four miles in eco mode a few more in comfort so yeah we've got uh, 213 miles I mean that's plenty for me to get there and back so even if the charger doesn't work when I get there uh, I've got plenty to get home again so uh, yeah very very happy with this car okay I've arrived here at Peterborough it's uh it's a transformation, isn't it? Coming in the 64 kilowatt hour versus the 39. Um, setting off in the 39 kilowatt hour, I had 80% as I did in this one. When I arrived the other end here in Peterborough in the 39, I only had 20% left. I'd used 60% of the 39 kilowatt hours. And uh, in this, the 64 kilowatt hour, um, I've got 52% left. So I've only used 28%. It's just the feeling of the numbers is dramatically different. Yes, it's different percentages of different size batteries but uh, it's a big big difference I've arrived here with a 135 mile range left to go um, in comfort mode in eco mode that's 141 miles um, I've averaged four miles per kilowatt hour over the 76 miles I think I've taken a little, little longer to get here but not much um, in that I haven't been pushing the car as hard as I did with the 39 kilowatt hour hence the efficiency is up a little but the efficiency is no real difference the temperature dropped to four degrees um, so it's a I think it's a degree lower than it was in the test with the 39 kilowatt hour but I've actually managed more efficiency out of this car with very little difference speed wise traveling for the journey um, dual carriageways 70 75 miles an hour occasionally 60 to 65 miles an hour on dual carriageways a roads it was a mix um, there was 50 to 55 miles an hour and 55 to 60 miles an hour very few sections of 40 mile an hour um, very few stops very light traffic so average speed was really good um, I would imagine and I'll put the time difference up on the screen that it wasn't a big big difference and yet efficiency I've done better in this car in the 64 kilowatt hour so if you're thinking of buying the 39 because you think it's going to be a little more efficient and that's what you're looking for then in real world driving it's not any different um, you really can't tell the difference it's not necessarily about the numbers that makes the biggest difference it's the feeling that um, I've charged for the same amount of time in my first charge and yet I've got here and used a fraction of the battery and I've got plenty enough to get back home again so I've saved an entire charge so that's one of the big differences of buying the 64 kilowatt hour the amount of time it will save you sat at a charger um, the charge rate of this car the 64 kilowatt hour 
is much higher. So I'll put those details on the screen too for the miles per hour difference between the 39 and the 64 because it is, it is significantly different. All I can say to summarise so far is I'm so, so glad I bought the 64 kilowatt hour. The, the difference is not in statistics between the two. It's not the efficiency and the range and the battery size and the percentages. It's not the numbers. You really can't do the analysis about which car to buy based on your distances and your speeds and your efficiencies and all those sort of things. The feeling you have is the big, big difference between the two. And that feeling is you need to be always be charging in your 39 kilowatt hour. In the 64, you don't. Right, anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to click the icon. It'll be around here soon. And uh, see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.